So in the past few videos, we've been working with all kinds of values. We worked with strings, basically a fancy way of saying text, numbers, booleans, true and false values, functions, and various other built-in things that are part of the JavaScript language. Now, as you can probably guess, built-in things is the proper way to describe the variety of values that you can use in JavaScript. There's a more formal name for them, and that name is types. And in this video, we're gonna learn more about what types are in the context of other objects and primitives and even, yes, pizza. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we go too far, I just want to keep one thing in the back of your mind. JavaScript is all about objects and composition. And composition is really a funny way of saying where smaller pieces of functionality work together to create a larger piece of functionality. And one of the best ways I found to illustrate this is by looking at pizza because Everyone loves pizza. I'm always eating something or think about eating something. And pizza is often very high on my list of things to be focusing on when I'm doing anything technical. So in case you haven't had pizza for a while, this is what a typical pizza looks like. You have your crust, you have ingredients, and, and just the normal stuff that goes into a pretty, a pretty typical pizza you might find anywhere. Now, here's the thing that I want to focus on. A pizza is made up of a variety of ingredients. Some are complex and some are pretty simple. Uh, complex ingredients are ones like your crust, your sauce, your cheese-like substance, and some more simple ingredients might be like your jalapenos, mushrooms, pepperoni, and some of the more basic toppings might put on top of it. And so let's go a little bit deeper onto what exactly I mean by simple and complex ingredients. A simple ingredient is something that you can't really break down any further. For example, you have your jalapenos and mushrooms. You can't really break those down any further. They are your most basic type of ingredient that you can add. Sure, you could nitpick and say that, you know, the unsliced version of a jalapeno or mushroom could be the, the more basic form of it, but we won't go that far. Well, let's talk about the actual composition of what it's made of, and these jalapenos and mushrooms are pretty much as they are in their most basic form, a topping that you can use. Now, to contrast that with the more complex ingredients, these are ones that can be broken down further. You know, we talk about them in the aggregate, but in reality, they're made up of many smaller pieces. So for example, our crust is made of water, flour, yeast, and salt, put some preparation process as well. Same with our sauce, multiple ingredients go into the making of that. Pepperoni and cheese, all of these things are not simple. They're made up of other more simple ingredients. But here's the thing though, there doesn't have to be other simple ingredients. Our complex ingredients can be made up of other complex ingredients as well. You know, you have this really rich nesting layer that can be simple or complex, and it doesn't really something, it's not something we think about actively when we talk about the bigger picture item, like just the crust as a whole, or some of the sauce as a whole. Now, what am I doing here? How does this relate to all of JavaScript? You know, what exactly is this whole pizza conversation adding to our understanding of this really great language? Well, this may be hard to believe. Everything learned about pizza in the previous slides was there for a purpose. The description of the simple and complex ingredients very neatly apply to how types in JavaScript actually work. You know, each individual ingredient could be considered a counterpart to a type that you can use. So just like our cheese, sauce, pepperoni, mushrooms, and bacon in our version of a pizza, the basic types in JavaScript are string, big int, boolean, null, undefined, number, object, symbol. Some of these types are probably familiar to you. You probably already have seen them in your use of JavaScript or in some of my previous videos. And some of them will not be, and then we will cover those at a later point. But just to you know keep the suspense from overwhelming, everything that we're gonna be looking at next, here's a quick look at what each of these types does. String, we've seen before, it's all about working with text. Number, as the name implies, is all about working with numbers. Boolean is representing true and false values. Null represents nothing, the digital equivalent of nothing. And undefined is very similar to null, but it's often returned when there's a value that should exist, but doesn't, like when you declare a variable, but don't actually assign a value to it. Big it allows you to work with really large numbers. Symbol is a unique identifier. It allows you to generate a very unique value that is internally used to keep things from colliding with each other or being too similar. Array, one of my favorite data types, is all about helping you store, retrieve, and manipulate a collection of data. Not just one piece of data, but many pieces of data. And object is like a generic catch-all. It's just a massive net of everything that goes into it. It's a shell for other types, including other objects. And then we'll talk about object as its own unique entity in much greater detail later on. Now, in JavaScript terminology involving types, 
Simple and complex are not exactly used. Instead, we use the more formal names, primitive and object. So in JavaScript, a simple ingredient would be considered a primitive type, and a more complex ingredient would be known as an object type, or just primitives and objects, if you want to skip the word type by itself. So we've been using the word object a lot. What exactly are objects? You know, The way to think about objects is the same way as you could think about them in the real world. They represent something meaningful. They represent something tangible that is serves a purpose and is a thing you can actually think of uniquely as providing value. So you have your, your hamburger is an object, your computer is an object, a book is an object, an alarm clock is an object, and you have many examples of objects in your world that are there for a particular reason. Now, some objects, like a paperweight, do not do much. They're very basic. They basically help you to, in this case, store some papers and keep them from flying out as if that is ever a problem for us in the real world these days. But other objects are more complex. You know, a television is a very complex object, has inputs and outputs, and it does all sorts of things that are pretty much something that we don't really understand all of the internal stuff, but we know that in the aggregate, it does something pretty useful. And that's an interesting thing to think about when it comes to objects. Objects come in different shapes, sizes, and levels of usefulness. But despite all this variation though, they're all the same at a high level. They're what is known as an abstraction, and a fancy way of saying that they allow you to use them in an easy way without really worrying about what happens under the covers. Do you need to know all the little things that happen inside a television in order to use it? No, because as long as you know the big things that are exposed for you, you're good to go. You know, how to turn it on and off, change the channel, change the volume, it's great. How exactly it happens under the covers, there's probably a lot of complexity that is built into that, but our need to understand it doesn't exist. We don't need to know how exactly a television works. Now in the JavaScript world, we have a bunch of objects that are also kind of the parallel siblings of the more primitive types and the built-in types we saw earlier. And then these predefined objects are your array, your boolean, date, function, math, number, regex, string. Now, here's an interesting thing. Some of these values, like for example, number, string, array, boolean, we kind of saw them before under earlier table as well, under, under simple ingredients, under simple, more primitive type, the primitives. What's going on here? Why are we seeing a duplicate of these in this particular world? Why are they here? Well, that's a topic for a, a future video, but the reason is that a lot of the things we work with in JavaScript happen to live in two different states. They can live as a primitive, but they can also live as an object. I know, that's a little confusing, but there is some logic behind it, and we'll talk about it later, but just know that we have a variety of objects, and the way you use them is gonna be kind of different as well. Like here's a very quick look at just how an array, a number, the date, the Boolean, and a large number or a string can be represented. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on the details here because we will go into much greater detail on these later on. But I just wanted to highlight though that the way we use objects is often different than the way we might have used like a primitive value, like a true and false, which is a value of text or a number like we may have seen in some previous videos. So we'll focus on some of that much later. So there you have it, a very quick overview of what objects are in the context of the bigger topic of types, you know, the various values that we tend to use in JavaScript. So while what we're using might seem very simple, you know, we're using a number, we're using some string, like a text, we're setting something to true and false or setting something to undefined. Behind the scenes though, there's a lot of complexity, just like our television hides a lot of complexity. Things in JavaScript that we use hide a lot of them as well. And many of these things are either primitives, in which case there isn't a whole lot of complexity they are hiding, or more likely they're objects, they're more complex, and they have a lot of things under the covers that we need to dive into. And this is important for us to know because not only is it important for us to understand how these work for the objects and primitives that JavaScript provides out of the box, but we will be creating our own primitives and our own objects and some of our own variety, oh no, well, we will be creating primitives, but we'll definitely be creating more of our objects with their own unique piece of functionality. So knowing all this in great depth is probably one of the more important parts of JavaScript that you and I will be working together on. So with that, if you have any questions on what we looked at, 
feel free to post in the forums at forum.group.com. You know, you can post your question on YouTube or ping me on Twitter or Facebook, but it's gonna be very difficult for me to notice them because of the volume of comments and questions I get there. And it's also not structured in any easy way. So if you have a question that is, you know, you want like a more thoughtful response on, please go to the forums at forum.group.com and I or someone else will be happy to help you out. If you found this video helpful, tell your friends and enemies who want to learn all about types, objects, and also how they all fit in with this wonderful world of pizza. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos that might be coming up. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook to be notified of fun, interesting, sometimes boring web development topics I like to talk about and share all the time. And if you want to extend your coverage of these material in a way that isn't a video or something on your screen, there's a book that you can buy. The, my latest version of JavaScript, Absolute Beginner's Guide, covers not only this topic that we just saw a video on, but many other topics as well. It comes in both paperback, which is physical, tangible, can be used as a paperweight actually, and also in a Kindle and ebook form so that you can read it on a Kindle or equivalent device, if any of such devices outside of Kindles actually exist. Actually, your iPad can actually be used as well, so I take it back. And so with that, I will see you all next time.